Hello everybody, welcome to the first tutorial of hopefully many. Uh, I'm hoping to do one of these every Friday, but I'm not that good with schedules, so we'll just see what happens. So, today we're doing wheat farming. So, as you can see here, this is the basic concept of a wheat farm. You've got a water source, which can go up to four blocks in any direction. Um, this is needed to hydrate the soil. If it's more than four blocks away and you've tried to plant some wheat, it will plant, but it'll probably pop up pop off quite easily. Now you do need light for these, so if you're going to build them underground, make sure you have got the area well lit, because otherwise they will also pop off. Also, um, this one here is obviously this, you're going to need the water source protected underneath, so, and if you're building this in any form of cold biome, you're going to want to put something on top of your water so it doesn't freeze over. Okay, so let's get on with the first design. So as you can see here, this is the first design. This is a dispenser design and these are a pain to craft, but you simply put a water bucket in each one of these. Um, go to the bottom, push the button, and as you can see, it harvests all the wheat straight down to the bottom. And you can see a lot of the time it'll um, leave them behind because it's a short burst of water, so you just simply push the button again until all the, water, until all the items come down. All this redstone circuit is here is a button onto a torch which locks this hopper here where it's got an item in it and the item will flow into here which has got a comparator leading into a redstone repeater which pulls the signal right the way up around here and powers these. Now the way this works is because hoppers are faster than the torch burnout it will give two pulses before the tor torch comes back on and locks this hopper which is what the Droppers, droppers need to turn off and turn on. So it pushes the water out and then pulls it back in. Only downside to this design, however, is you do have to plant them, replant everything yourself, which can be quite tedious. And obviously, if you fall on the crops, you'll have to retill the land. Now, as I said earlier, making droppers it dispensers is quite a pain because of bows not stacking. So this is the exact same design again, however this time I've added a torch on the end which goes and powers all of these pistons which have been raised up by one block and this is simply push that button again and as you can see all the water flows down and the pistons close up breaking all the crops. Now these weren't fully ground so there isn't much wheat here and again because of this one's inverted it's much easier to add delay if it was necessary, but again, it's not really necessary. You just hit the button a few times and the job's done. Now, this design is the fully automatic design, which is the one we're going to be building today. So, to build this, as you can see here, there are minecarts at the bottom. Uh, there is a etho hopper clock here, leading into a one tick pulse, going through into a line of repeaters, which keep these minecarts in sync and gives them time to empty. As well as at the back here, there are levers, which is the cheap, cheapest form of power, which is a stick and a piece of cobblestone. It's just powering these rails at the back to bounce the minecarts back. Now you can do a spiral design, but I find they take a long time to pick all the items up, so this is what I usually do. Now as you can see there, there are trapdoors where there's a dip in the floor, and they, that is to hold the water in place. If I quickly pop in here. As you can see here, there is water all along here. Now you don't have to use metal trap doors, but I'll be using them because you can't accidentally open them. Not that that matters, because again, water doesn't f flow through trap doors. So you can use wooden to save an iron. Okay, so the reason I haven't got a villager in here at the moment harvesting, because that's how this works. You will need a brown coat villager, which is the farmer class, and he'll harvest the wheat and drop it on the floor, which the minecarts will then pick up. But you'll see that in a second. The reason I've explained it all beforehand is if you want to just quickly go and build this yourself, if you've got basic understanding of how redstone works, then go right ahead. Uh, the timings in here is 32 pieces of redstone, or any block you like. It can be cobble, it can be whatever. And uh, that will harvest, that will uh, set the minecarts going across to pick up any items on the ground. Okay, so I think what I'll do now is a, I will 
make a quick jump cut where I'll build this bottom section here and bring you back to put the minecarts in. Okay? Alright, be right back. Okay guys, I'm back. I've built this little platform out here and um, as you can see it is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17 blocks across. Um, actually, you're probably going to want to go 18 because this row here is where your hoppers are going to go. So what you want to do is place your block at the end so you can make sure it's facing so the hoppers are pointing in the right direction. So you can see the nozzles will be facing forwards into this block here. Then you can simply destroy that block there and take that wherever you want, whether it's into a sorting system or an item elevator, wherever you feel like you want to take it. Okay, now you're going to want to place rails along here like this and oh, I do this all the time want us to do and then you're going to want to place two lots of powered rails along here like this and like that and you're going to want to bring a block up here take this all the way across And take your levers and make sure these all get powered all the way along. Now you can just stick a redstone torch here, but you can't put a redstone block here. Well, you can, but I find that whenever I use a redstone block, the minecarts tend to stop more on this end than the other end. Now, I don't know whether that is a feature of the game or not, but that's just in my experience. So, yeah. Okay, so that's all powered. Now you want to get your regular rails and just run these along here like this. And you'll notice these dips here are one, two, three, four in. And that's because this is where the water source is going to go above. Okay, so I'll place all of these rails in and we'll be right back. Okay guys, welcome back. I've put all the rails down and as you can see, I've uh, built up the edges here a little bit as well. So what we're going to want to do next is put these trapdoors in. Because it's going to be a lot easier to do it now than it is to do it later. Okay, so you put two blocks like that. That underneath and simply break those. You want to do the same here. Break those. And again here. Break those. And finally here and break them again and the see the dip will make the minecarts go under there and yeah so what we're going to do next is we're going to want to put all of the dirt into place so what i'll do is i'll put all the dirt in and i'll be right back okay guys as you can see i've got all of the uh, dirt in now except for this piece here for some reason and what you want to do is you want to till all this dirt and before you do this last section here you're going to want to put all your minecart hoppers in all the way along here and then fill this in with dirt and then get it all tilled right there the hole okay now it's up to you what you want to do here on the section um, but you're going to want to build something around it so zombies can't get to it. So what I'd usually do is put glass. So if I look at some glass here. Now I wouldn't recommend using glass, plane, glass panes. Because it creates like a lip where items can get stuck. So you want to make it as efficient as, as, efficient as possible. So you're just going to put that glass all the way around. And then once you've done that, uh, you're going to want to make sure you put some lighting in the ceiling. So what I'll do is I'll put the glass around and I'll start with the ceiling. And I'll be right back. Back and as you can see, I've uh, put the ceiling in with the glass. And with the lights, you're going to want to go every two. Then a light, then two, then a light, then two, then a light. And that'll keep it all of the inside lit. You can do less than that. You can change with the pattern. You can make it all light. You can make it a little bit less light. But that just makes sure nothing spawns up here and nothing pops off down there and I've missed a few here 
Okay, so next what you want to gonna do, what you're gonna wanna do, is get some seeds and pre-plant all of this before you get your villager down here. So uh, I'm just gonna run along here, get all of these planted, and then I'll be right back. Okay, guys, well we're back, and as you can see, I've got myself a brown coat villager. This one is a shepherd, and what you wanna, what you're gonna wanna do next is get yourself eight stacks of seeds. That's eight stacks now i know that's quite a lot because it's like well if i had eight stacks where i would be setting up a farm but this is an automated farm so this is usually a bit later in the game because obviously once you've got hoppers and things so once you've got eight stacks you're going to want to throw them all at this guy and obviously i'm in creative so that didn't work so i've got to do it like this three four five six seven eight and nine for good measure and slowly he will pick all of them up and then if you throw nine at him like i have you should be able to drop in and pick one stack up so he's got the other eight now and the reason we do this is because villagers have eight slots in in their inventory but with wheat with um wheat farms they when they pick up the wheat they will also craft it into bread and eventually their inventory will fill up with wheat so they'll stop planting because you need seeds to plant now obviously when it comes to carrot and potato farms you don't need to worry about this because it's it's as easy as just filling their inventory because it's you plant a carrot you get a carrot you know there's no secondary thing so now what you're going to want to do is you can lure them in by simply growing some wheat and setting them free and as soon as he detects that that's over there you should run over to it go on you can do it and go and go there we go and block him in and you see that he's just harvested the wheat so last thing we need to do is go and set up the timings for the what are they called hopper carts hopper mine carts that's the one and that'll be over here so what you're going to want to do next is place a block down like this and the rails are on the other side of here as we know Go along here like this and put down a line of repeaters like so. Now usually I'd put these all on four ticks, but that's not completely necessary. That's just a personal thing to keep the rails on longer to make sure they've definitely been powered and definitely send. That's more for laggy servers than anything. So if you're on a laggy server, you're going to want to do this. Then you're going to bring this along like this. A line of redstone dust, like so. And now's the tricky part. Okay guys, now you're going to want to come out one, two, three blocks. And there is a good reason for that. Place two uh, hoppers facing into each other like so. And you're going to want to go down one here, put one here, break that block there. Place a comparator here, and then a piece of redstone there. Go down and across like this. Place another comparator and another piece of redstone. Now some of you may recognize this circuit. It's called an ethyl hopper clock. A lot of people use it because it is a very, very good circuit. And here we go. We're going to want to place a piece of redstone there. And I usually use 32 items for this. But if you run a laggy server, you might want to use more to slow down the pistons pushing back and forth. If you want a server with clear lag, which is something that deletes entities, then you may want to make this a bit faster so it doesn't get so none of your items get deleted. That's all perfectly fine. That's just a personal preference thing. You'll find a timing that works best for you. So now what you want to gonna want to do is place a redstone repeater there, put that going into a block like so, then place a block over here like this, another repeater here, have a sticky piston here with a solid block on the top, then another block there, another repeater, set that to four ticks, and then simply connect that to your redstone and you should be good to go. So now if I just quickly break and replace this, you should see it on fire. Okay guys, and I think that's just about it. We've got everything done. So as you can see now, the villager in there is at hard at work collecting all the wheat. Once that comes down, that'll go into the minecarts down here, which you can put glass here if you want to see them all in action. 
you can see they're all going across and bouncing back and stop that's exactly what you want okay and obviously your output is here so you can take that to wherever you like and as you can see we're already getting seeds and wheat so i hope you enjoyed this tutorial if you want any more information just let me know down in the comments below okay well hope you enjoyed this video i'm sorry it was a bit choppy i've had a lot going on today so thanks for watching guys uh, this is rosenkai see you later ba -da -ba -ba -da -ba.